One more story before we go to break. In the shooting death of Trayvon Martin in Sanford, Florida, we still haven't heard directly from the gunman George Zimmerman, but a new eyewitness account of the confrontation plus police security video from the night in question are helping to shape the public's perception of the case. Zimmerman was brought to the Sanford, Florida police station less than 40 minutes after the shooting of the 17-year-old in what he claims was self-defense. Zimmerman's defenders say his injuries aren't clearly visible in the police video because he wasn't given because he was given first aid before reaching the station. The gunman's brother insists Zimmerman used his weapon as a last resort after being attacked by Martin. George was out of breath. He was barely conscious. His last thing he uh, remembers doing was moving his head from the concrete to the grass so that if he was banged one more time, he wouldn't be you know, wearing diapers for the rest of his life and being spoon-fed by his brother. And there would have been George dead. Radio was just... So... Oh, you know, what we don't understand, I, I think I agree with, with... I think some of us don't understand this. Like, why is it that some on the right are actually taking this up as a cause when, as the National Review said, almost immediately after it happened, Hey, this has nothing to do with gun rights. This has nothing to do with the Second Amendment. This has nothing to do with stand your ground laws. This has nothing to do with the NRA. This has everything to do with a guy that's trying to play security cop who is unhinged, who chased down and shot a 17-year-old kid armed with Skittles and iced tea. And yet, I mean, Mark, some of these, some of these guys on the right are jumping in with both feet on the far right. They should listen to the National Review when wise conservative thinkers and not take this up as a cause, but they are and they're trashing Trayvon Martin. Uh, it's, it, it's disgusting. It's two of the most depressing trends in our yeah. political media culture. One is, in the wake of the O.J. Simpson trial, every criminal case with disputed facts just becomes fodder mm -hmm. for people uh, uh, in, in, in the media. But the other is, everything has to be political for some of these people. And if it's, this is the big story of the day, they feel they must talk about it, and they must talk about it in a partisan way, and in a way that is just is so bad for the country. And, and Willie, the New York Times has something online in the, the lead. Um, I forget what the blog's called. I guess it's the lead yeah. blog. Um, and showing how some websites, including some racist websites, but also, sadly, some fairly mainstream websites, are actually going in to Trayvon Martin's social media pages, be it Twitter or MySpace, and they're trying to find ominous-looking pictures while skipping over pictures of him holding up a birthday cake, smiling, him fishing with his dad, him standing outside proudly of his home, dressed in a tux, ready to go to prom. But they're trying to cherry pick pictures, trying to make him look ominous, somehow, somehow suggesting that he deserved getting shot in the chest with a nine millimeter because uh, because they they find a picture that may make yeah. them uncomfortable. And to what end? It's not just to what end? It's not just the photographs too. They're pulling tweets out that don't actually say anything that would be relevant to the case, but make him sound thuggish maybe in some way in the way he speaks. I'm not quite sure what they're going for with that. But I think Mark's right. Some on the right view this as a moment where many in the media rushed to judgment, took one side right away without hearing all the facts. They put up the sweet young pictures of Trayvon Martin. They're trying, for some reason, to provide balance, to pull it back the other way. I think they've picked the wrong case to do that. And, and exactly. Trayvon Martin's mother, uh, the, the pain, the agony that she's going through, yeah. said, first my son was killed, and now they're trying to kill his reputation. You go through that Twitter feed, it's innocuous at best. I mean, I, I can show you a lot of white kids from <laughs> suburban neighborhoods can take you through their Facebook pages, their Twitter feeds, their pictures. Come on. This yeah, is, that's this a really is, good point. This is really, I mean, I wonder if some of these people that are attacking him would like their children's social media pages going through. This is, this is beneath contempt. And we've talked about this before. This is beneath contempt. Uh, and these people on the right, far right, 
um, are, are being fools to try to make this a political issue. Again, there are responsible, reasonable, conservative outlets. And I talked about the National Review from the very beginning. Darrell Peden out of Florida, very conservative guy who drafted the Stand Your, your Ground bill. A lot of Republican politicians that are doing the right thing. But there are some out there that are marginalizing themselves and making fools of themselves. Because they have picked this case to. Well, because, you know what? I guess it's because the president actually said something to comfort the parents. And I guess they just can't handle that. Can't I handle guess in their himself. warped, twisted, distorted political worldview, that makes this dead 17 year old boy who was kept in the morgue for three days before they even notified his parents of his whereabouts, I guess that makes it okay? It's pretty wow. sick.